Hi, I'm Bob Kinote and this is my buddy old Tex. And his cooling system has been a little constipated lately, so we're going to give him the old flush. Dang it. Now, if you've been following the past few episodes, you know that I've been dealing with a heating problem on old tech. Things operate pretty normally for the first 10, 15 minutes, and then particularly if I stop someplace and let it sit a while, it's like heat soaks up from the bottom end and, uh, and it starts hot and just gets hotter from there. So uh, we've done a number of things and we'll sort of recap that at the end of this episode because really we've only got two things left and one of them is a cooling system flush and the other is the thermostats. If one of those two things don't pan out, I'm not sure where we go from here. Now I've done a lot of research online as to chemicals that can be used to flush your cooling system. Ed, down at my local advance store, who's kind of my go-to guy for this sort of thing, said that people swear by this product right here. And if you remember from last year's videos, the name Iron Tight probably rings a bell because they make a product that worked really well for me in terms of sealing heater cores and uh, other cooling system issues. And, uh, you know, it's been over a year now and they've been working just fine. So this is Iron Tight Thorough Flush. Cleans all cooling systems, cleans heater cores, clears the DEX cool crap, diesel oil coolers, fuel tank residue, bio and ethanol deposits, and so forth. And whatever that means. And this is a dry chemical that, let's read the directions here in English. Premix one bottle of thorough flush red powder concentrate with one gallon of warm water. Drain one gallon of coolant from the vehicle coolant system. If the radiator has a cap, which we don't, put thorough flush directly into the radiator. Have a later vehicle with no cap, put thorough flush mixture in the radiator filled reservoir. Uh, we're not gonna do that. What we've got is a, a crossover tube, a bypass crossover tube that has a radiator cap on top of it. We're gonna add it through there. Uh, replace the fill cap, start vehicle with heater on high and run for 10 to 12 minutes after vehicle reaches operating temperature. Caution, thorough flush is very powerful. Do not exceed 12 minutes of runtime after the vehicle has reached operating temperature or cooling system damage may occur. Now, I did call Iron Tight and talked about this product with them after I purchased it. And uh, they said the main issue there is that it will attack old rubber hoses. So all the hoses on tax are, well, they were new a year ago. So, well, two years ago. So I think we're probably gonna be okay. We could, I'm probably gonna run it about 15 minutes after it warms up, but we're gonna get it out of there right away. So uh, stop the engine and drain the entire coolant system, flush coolant system with water until the water is clear of the red thorough flush solution. And essentially what you do is you refill the, refill the system. Sounds simple. I like it. Let's see what happens. I decided to drain the one gallon of coolant necessary out through the normal drain petcock. And it's really kind of a cool setup where you've got this valve down below here, the bottom of the right-hand tank, on the passenger side and this rod that goes up and you got this handle right here and when when you turn this rod this one is a little bit stiff when you turn the rod that moves that valve you don't pull it up or down you twist it and the interesting thing when i did this on old text was that initially i got flow out of here then it stopped and then i moved this back and forth a few times and then it started again so I'm wondering, we've just got a load of crap down at the bottom of this radiator. We'll see. 
We got our gallon of coolant out and drained. And what we're going to do now is we're going to mix this stuff up. And based on what the instructions say, I'm thinking gloves might not be a bad idea. Now it is a reddish powder. Looks like that. And I'm going to dump that in first. And then we dump in a gallon of warm water. We're going to add this to the car, top it up the rest of the way with some of the old coolant if need be, and then go out and run this thing. All right, let's see what this does. Unfortunately, I didn't have the camera running when I was doing the addition of the chemical to the cooling system, but, you know, basically nothing really to see. The chemical, once it's dissolved in water, comes out looking like really red wine. I'm really excited to see if this stuff actually works or not. Now, this being a 91 degree day, I think this is going to heat up pretty quick. I've got this 18 mile test circuit that I do that uh, I think it's going to be pretty warm by the time we get back. Now the instructions on the container say that you need to get this stuff out of your engine in 12 minutes. So already I've loosened up all the hoses and then of course retightened the clamps and uh, gotten all the tools arranged, the jack in place. So all I got to do is pull it up to the jack, jack it up, relieve the pressure uh, by turning the petcock, and, uh, and then pulling the lower radiator hose. And then start flushing stuff. Yeah, I'm about 10 miles in, 12 miles in, and it's already up to 200, 205 degrees, heading toward 210. Okay, I'm gonna turn for home right now. This is not good, there's something something seriously wrong with this engine. Wow, look at this stuff. I don't know what that is, but it's out here and not in my engine. Keep in mind, this is probably about 25% of the overall cooling system quantity here. Hmm. Doing a back flush, or what I view as a back flush, as far as I can figure. What I've done is I've taken a piece of 5 8 inch heater hose, attached a 5 8 garden hose repair part to it, hooked that up with the garden hose from the house, and uh, turned it on. What it ought to do is take the coolant through the bypass, connector tube up front through the bypass at the thermostat, into the coolant rails, through the heads, down into the block, through the water pump, and out down below. At least that's the way I seize it. We'll keep that going until this no longer shows pink, which it still is a little bit. Water's cheap, keep it going. I think this is what we're looking for. You can still, you can see that it's still kind of pink, so we're gonna let it run. All right, let's see what happens. Now I've got the cooling system 
filled with stray water because I'm going to be draining it down anyway because if I'm going to do a complete around the world service on the cooling system there's still a couple more things that I really need to do. Now the unfortunate thing here is that today it's about 75 degrees. It's about 15 degrees cooler than it was yesterday. So we're not doing an apples and apples kind of a comparison. But on 75 degree days in the past, this thing would have been heating up pretty good by now. In fact, I couldn't do my test circuit more than once without uh, the temperature getting excessive. So what we're finding here is that things have improved dramatically. I've been driving this thing not, not on my test circuit, but I just kind of took off and went for an extended drive just to see what would happen. And the fact is that it's been at about 195 degrees all along here, and it's stabilized. And what we're going to do now is we're going to drive it through town, just regular stop and go traffic, and see what happens. I have noticed that if I stop at a stop sign, the temperature will increase a little bit, but as soon as I start moving, it will drop back. So this is all very encouraging. I mean, this, this chemical really does appear to work. Now I've done a fair bit of driving so far through town, stop and go traffic, both stop signs and stop lights, and I've been doing it with air conditioning on. And the temperature has remained pretty stable. Again, this is a 75 degree day, but uh, you know, this wouldn't have done it before. So, I think it's a very, very positive result. Now one thing I've noticed is that as I'm driving uphill, there's a couple of steep hills that I've been negotiating here. I've noticed that the temperature has begun to climb, and that's not good. I've got a real strong sense that if this were a 90 degree day, that I would have uh, seen elevated coolant temperatures by now. Yeah, it's starting to climb a little bit. Now, if I get on the flat and the temperature comes down, that's not a bad thing. At the very least, the car can be driven now on days like today without a whole lot of trouble. Yeah, the temperature isn't coming down. But, you know, 205 degrees, 200 degrees, I'll take that. I'd like to see 195, but clearly the iron tight chemical has made a significant improvement in the situation. It's just that I don't think we're there yet. Now, there's a couple of people that have commented that the Jaguar V12 cooling system just isn't designed to handle 90 degree days. Well, I'm sorry, I can't buy that. You can't convince me that a major automotive manufacturer isn't going to do hot weather testing with a new model. Uh, there have been people over the years that have commented that they've been running cars in Southern California and Arizona during the summertime in traffic and they've never had a problem. And I tend to believe them. The drop valve seat phenomenon, which is a result of overheating these engines again and again and again, according to a couple of people I've talked to in the UK or from the UK, have said that the drop valve seat is a North American phenomenon. And, you know, in my book, that has to do with maintenance and repair, period. That's the perspective I'm operating from here. Now this chemical flush is the first thing that I've done that has actually made a significant difference in how this thing cools. So I tell you what, I'm a believer in this product. In fact, there's a couple other iron tight products that I intend to use as well. And there's gonna be videos on that also. I'm about two miles from home at a stoplight. I've had to turn the air conditioning off and uh, you know the temperature is getting up around 205, 210. So we still have a problem, clearly, but it is dramatically improved over what we had earlier. 
So we're on the right track. I think we may have actually dealt with the really big problem, but there's something else. And the only thing that I've got left is, well, actually there's two things. First of all, I'm not convinced that the flushing, the back flushing technique that I used uh, yesterday really uh, is doing anything for the radiator. So the plan is to pull the radiator out and flush that forwards and backwards so that I'm sure that I got everything out of it. And then what I would intend to do is to pull the thermostats, even though they're only two years old, pull the thermostats and check to see if they're opening to the point where the bypass port is being cut off completely. Because I've had a number of comments from people who have said that they bought brand new thermostats as a normal preventative maintenance procedure and uh, the car started overheating right away. And they put them in a pot of hot water and they found that they weren't opening to the point where that disc on the front of them actually is going to shut off the bypass port. So that would be a, that would be a bad thing, obviously. Um, you're recirculating hot water. And uh, I'm looking at the temperature now, it's actually come back down to about 195 degrees. So it's clear that if I had the air conditioning on in this car and it was a 90 degree day, that it would be heating right now. So we're not actually out of the woods yet. So if back flushing the radiator and uh, changing the thermostats doesn't do it, we're run, we've run out of options. If you like these videos, like, subscribe, and maybe leave a comment down below so we can know what we can do to do what we do better. Oh, and one thing, about 95% of you people that are watching this video right now are not subscribers, and I really need your help. I need you to, uh, to subscribe and push the notifications bell, and you know, I really need your help to, to help keep this channel going. So, we'll see you the next time on the Camp Chaos Chronicles.